guys, welcome to my unboxing of the 2018 Mac Mini. Now I'm super stoked for this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and start unboxing it. Unfortunately, this one we do need a box knife just to at least get the shipping packages undone. And wow, okay, well, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is some really interesting packaging going on here. There's this little top hat right here. And then here is the actual box of the Mac Mini. I will go ahead and get that out of the way. Holy crap, guys. Are you guys excited for this? I don't know. I've been looking forward to this for a very long time because I have been wanting to create my own Plex server with this and use this as my media and entertainment area. But damn, this thing can get powerful. You can pack up to 64 gigs of RAM in it and uh, an i7 hexacore processor. It's pretty impressive. Everything aside from the graphics card is pretty damn epic in this computer anyways. Box is pretty simple. Unfortunately, also looks like there's no tabs. Just sneak right in here and hopefully unbox this without causing too much damage to the packaging. And uh, here comes the sticker, guys. Oh, looks like I'm getting ahead of myself here a little bit, trying to open it up. But that is how it opens up. It looks like it's just going to slide out just like that. Put that guy aside right there and center that up. Well, just like the iPad Pro has a similar look right here, you can pull this tab up to remove the Mac Mini from the box right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside the box right here. I'm really curious. We have our informational packets. Um, I haven't actually unboxed a Mac Mini before, so Looks like similar startup guides now, just like iPhones and iPads showing you what's on the Mac Mini and uh, how to get started, basically. Some warranty information and some Apple stickers, of course. And let's go, looks like that's it for right there. Here is where the power cable must be. And that is it, guys. That is all that is in the box. You get a power cable and the Mac Mini. That is pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead and Throw all this in the box right here, set it off to the side. Now let's get back into this unboxing of the actual computer itself. Again, it looks like it's going to peel off from the bottom right there, unveiling Mac Mini on the base. And that is pretty much it right there. And I already left fingerprints on it, dang it. But, wow, that space gray color wave is looking sharp. And it looks like right here, we have one more tab to unveil all of the ports. So here we go. Wow. Look at that, guys. There are all the ports on the Mac Mini. You got your standard power cord right here, power port with the power button right there on the side, ethernet port, four USB-C Thunderbolt ports right here, an HDMI and two USB type A ports with a headphone jack, surprisingly. But that's awesome for compatibility. Really, the only thing you lose out on in this generation that I really was hoping for was an optical port for audio. Granted, you can get an adapter that connects via USB-C. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in. Pretty much all you gotta do is, let's flip this guy around one more time. You got the power cord right here. I'm gonna go grab a monitor and I'll be right back. All right, well, hopefully this will do. Um, yeah. HDMI goes in HDMI. Again, if you have a display port or any other port other than HDMI on your monitor, you're going to have to get a dongle going from USB-C to whatever output you want. One more thing we need is a mouse that does not come with the Mac Pro. This is just a cheapo mouse, nothing really special special about this one. This right here is the mouse that I typically use. If you guys are curious on what I use as my daily driver, um, this guy right here is just an extra one I had for this video. So once again, I just went and got a wired keyboard for this video and this is getting to be a mess with all these cables. But pretty much just plug in your mouse and keyboard or you can use wireless ones as well, but for this demonstration, I'm going to do everything wired so it goes rather smoothly. Once you have everything plugged in, go ahead and make it look nice, and that's what I'm gonna do, and I'll be right back. 
All right, well, there we go. Once we have everything all set up and a little bit more organized, again, once you have all the cables connected, let's go ahead and turn on our monitor. And then we can turn on our Mac Mini. The power button is on the back right. So not sure why my monitor didn't turn on, but once this Asus logo comes up, I'll let this turn on for a second. And then I'll go ahead and hit the power button on the Mac Mini. There is a white light indicating that power is turning on right there. So let's go ahead and see. Wow, this thing is booting up quick. It looks like it's already almost done and we'll wait and see exactly what it looks like. That is interesting. That is probably my monitor doing that. There we go. Now that we have everything all set up and turned on and wow, that was quick, but let's just go ahead and click English to continue and then we'll select United States or wherever you're from, set up a keyboard, connect to Wi-Fi. Well, while we're waiting for this to load and connect to the Wi-Fi network, if you guys have missed it, go ahead and check out one of our latest videos about the iPad Pro. Me and Tanner both did our own separate videos about the 11 inch iPad Pro, as well as the 12.9 inch. These things are freaking incredible. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section, but let's get back into this unboxing and set up. I'm not 100% sure why it's not connecting to Wi-Fi. It looks like the entire computer froze. So I'm gonna reboot. Not off to a good start, Mac Mini. Um, Granted, this is just the i3 version, eight gigabytes of RAM. It's the base model that starts out at 799, but this is not off to a good start. Let's go ahead and hold down the power button and restart this guy and try this once again. Well, at least this thing does not take that long to boot because damn, it already froze just trying to set up the thing and connect to a Wi-Fi network. So not 100% sure what was going on there. This time we don't have the weird screen going on. Um, and we're right back to where we were back in the action of setting this guy up. So hopefully it will go a little bit more smoothly this time. Um, this is the first Mac I've unboxed. God, I can't even think since like a 2012 MacBook. Honestly, like I built my own computer. I built a Hackintosh. Um, and I've been wanting to do a video on that for a while. Let me know down in the comments section if you guys think a Hackintosh video would be awesome. If you guys would want to see something along those lines. Well, I'll go ahead and try to connect to Wi-Fi once again. That was the right password. There we go. That was really strange. I've never seen it freeze up right at the beginning. You have the option to transfer data. I'm just going to set this up as a new Mac, but you can transfer data from a Windows PC or from another Mac. Time Machine Backup. Same steps. Sign into iCloud or Apple ID. Um, I'm going to get a verification. I type in my password right. And don't break my iPad. Um, 629, 353. We're almost there, guys. Here we go. Create a new password. I'm just going to have my username be Tony. So unfortunately, I couldn't just leave this blank. There has to be a way to set up a user account without a passcode or just set up automatic login. But you really got to create a pretty substantial passcode now. Doing like one character or the space bar just doesn't work anymore, unfortunately. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's just the initial setup. Like I said, I haven't actually set up a Mac from scratch in a very long time, but the steps don't change too much over the years. Granted, this is a beautiful machine. I love the space gray in the Mac Mini. Um, it's a little bit bigger than the Apple TV for sure. It's kind of like the first and second generation Apple TVs. If you guys remember what those were like, how big they were, that's how big this guy is and how thick. It's really not that heavy. Um, so far, I'm really liking it. And like I said, for my use, that I'm going to be using it as a Plex server or a computer that I can use on my TV. It's going to work great. Um, and you can spec this thing out with a hexa-core processor, 64 gigs of RAM, I think up to like two or three terabytes worth of space if you really want. Some of these upgrades can get rather pricey, which is kind of ridiculous. Again, just kind of navigating through the on-screen steps. I don't want to store my files in iCloud Drive, but you have the option to. Lighter dark theme. Oh God, if you guys have yet to check out dark mode on macOS Mojave, I would highly suggest to do so. It looks incredible. I mean, Mac OS was already light years ahead of Windows, but just with the simple addition of dark mode on the computer, man, they continue to excel in every way. I personally like this year's Mac OS Mojave update a lot more than iOS 12. Looks like I have another keyboard prompt right here but that was easy to take care of. 
Not sure what, oh, what the hell? Not that That is a weird glitch going on right there, but in any sense, guys, that is it. It is set up, you are logged in. Um, we created an account and went through all the on-screen steps to set up the Mac Mini. I'm just gonna go ahead and go to about this Mac. It's a 3.6 gigahertz Intel Core i3, eight gigabytes of RAM, and it does have 1.5 gigabytes of graphics memory. So that's better than I thought. Um, not too bad. Let's go ahead and run a couple uh, benchmarks and see exactly where this guy stands. All right, well, here we go. Now I have some applications to run various performance tests. First up, we're going to start with Blackmagic's disk speed test. So to do this, I'm just gonna select a target drive and I'll just go ahead and select the desktop. Again, this one is going to be measuring the solid state drive performance. If I click start, here is the readout. Let's go ahead and let it run a couple times here, but it looks like we're topping out at about 650 megabytes per second for write, and the read speed is 2500. That is quite a big difference right there. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, the speed test should be a little bit better than that for the write speed, but in any case, that's why it booted up so damn quick is because the read speed is just phenomenal on this device but unfortunately it looks like it's gonna take a little bit of time to write things to it. The write speed just isn't that fast, but again, like I said, the read speed is pretty damn incredible. All right, well, moving on, let's go ahead and run a Geekbench. It looks like there's already an update available. Let's go ahead and go to about this Mac real fast. We're on version 10.14. We might be on the uh, original one, so let's go ahead and click on that real fast and see exactly what it's prompting us to update right here. It looks like they're, yeah, 10.14.1 update is ready. It did not come with that. It came pre-installed with macOS Mojave 10.14, but not 14.1. So you guys may have to update your software right after unboxing it. But in any case, let's go ahead and open up Geekbench and I'll run a CPU benchmark test real fast, get an idea, a general outline of how this is performing and make sure my, I didn't get a dud or anything right here. We'll compare it to online statistics once it's done. So I'll be right back. All right, well, here we go. Here is the Geekbench results. We have a single core of 4644 and a multi-core score of 13712. Again, this is just the i3 3.6 gigahertz processor. The i7 hexacore gets about the same multi-core score, just a little bit better, but the single core score is actually pretty damn impressive, getting it up to about 5,900, close to 6,000 for the Mac Mini. So if you guys did need things for like Xcode or anything CPU intensive, if you got the i7 on this Mac Mini, it would be pretty damn good. But again, this base model, it's good if you haven't had a Mac in the past or just want something simple like a media server or a web browser or something for Word documents, but that's just not the most impressive single core or multi. That'd be horrible for editing videos and things like that. Um, but again, the Mac Mini just plays into multiple markets and this in theory could be enough if you just need like a mobile station for editing um, or just photoshopping, little things like that basically. Um, all right, well, moving on, let's go ahead and do Nova Bench. We'll start the test and I will be right back. All right, well, sorry, this is so small, guys, but here are the results. We have a CPU score of 575, a RAM score of 219, a GPU score of 247, or excuse me, 243, and then a disk score of 115 with an overall score of 1,152. All right, for the final test, let's go ahead and go to Cinebench. Now, I don't think this is gonna provide us anything enlightening, but I just wanted to see exactly what it gets. Let's go ahead and do an OpenGL, or excuse me, a CPU test right here, and let's see how loud this thing gets. Ooh, that is painfully slow. Fan has not even started in the slightest. Very impressive feature to me is how quiet this thing is, even under intense CPU loads. I mean, this is pushing the CPU to its absolute maximum right now, and the thing is dead quiet. 
It is a little slower of a processor. It sounds like that the i7 in this body gets a little bit hotter and it runs a little bit louder under intense CPU loads. But overall, this will eventually get the job done. And we have a score of 584. Oh my god, that is really painful. But in any case, guys, those are the four performance tests that I wanted to run. And that is how to set up the Mac Mini from scratch, the 2018 version, and unboxing it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate your guys' support. It's been a phenomenal experience making videos like this, and I look forward to making more um, for you guys, because, man, it's just a lot of fun. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, but until next time, this is Tony, signing out.